I've created a bunch of raving fans across the internet because I'm the one that tells you you can still consume coffee even when you're on the pursuit of a healthy life. Yeah, in a world where everyone's telling you to abstain from certain foods and abstain from certain beverages, I'm here telling you drink your coffee, drink your cold brew, drink your nitro coffee. It's probably helping you more than it's hurting you. So I'm gonna break down nitro coffee and cold brew and I'm gonna break down hot brew coffee. I'm gonna give you the clear breakdown of which one you might wanna go for. So this includes if you're fasting, if you're doing keto, or if you're just trying to get healthy in general. But hey, you are tuned in to the internet's leading performance and nutrition channel. Brand new videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of other videos ranging from live broadcasts, vlog style videos, and good old fashioned Q and A's peppered in throughout the rest of the week. Also, make sure you check out highly.com so you can see the selection of premium performance apparel that I'm always decked out in, in my videos. So let's get down to nitro coffee for a second. The reason I wanna to touch on nitro coffee is because it's been getting some scrutiny lately. People seem to think that because nitrogen is added to it, that it's unhealthy. So let's just clear that up. But first let's break down what exactly nitro coffee is. You see, nitro coffee is simply cold brew coffee that's been infused with nitrogen. Okay, what happens is when they run the actual cold brew coffee through a tap, they're infusing high pressure nitrogen that's creating these micro bubbles that's literally just adding sort of a frothy texture to the cold brew coffee. So it's not like there's any kind of nitrogen that's literally added in a chemical form into the coffee or anything. It's literally just high pressure nitrogen gas. And ultimately, elemental nitrogen is totally safe. Elemental nitrogen is what's called an inert gas. It's chemically dead. It doesn't do anything. It's literally just an inert gas. And that's exactly why it's used. You see, for example, when they're first trying to make nitro coffee, they were using carbonation. They tried carbonating coffee to make it sort of a, a frothier coffee. What ends up happening is when you add any kind of carbonation like that, you get carbonic acid as a byproduct. So this ends up creating a bunch of acidity. You're adding that to coffee that's already fairly acidic and you end up with a really bitter tasting coffee because there's actually a chemical reaction that's occurring. That's the whole beauty of using nitrogen, an inert gas that is chemically dead. So you're literally just infusing micro bubbles and you're displacing a little bit of oxygen to get a little bit of nitrogen there. So you're ultimately ending up with a smooth cup of cold brew coffee. Now here's where nitro coffee might actually be the most advantageous as far as your health benefits go. That same nitrogen that can displace a small amount of oxygen can also displace the oxygen that could trigger free radicals. You see, when you're looking at coffee and you're looking at the acidity or the coffee bean in general, if you have a high amount of oxygen, you have a high amount of oxidation. As soon as oxidation occurs, you have more bitterness, you have more acidity, but you also have more free radical damage. So if you can replace some of the oxygen with a little bit of nitrogen, although it's a small amount, it's a little bit speculative, you could, in theory, actually reduce the negative impact of the coffee in the first place, just a little bit. So you're actually having an advantage by using nitro coffee, not any kind of detriment. So let's take a look at where things are starting with nitro coffee in the first place, because nitro coffee before nitrogen is ever even added into the mix is actually just a cold brew coffee. So let's talk about what cold brew is versus hot brew. Okay, cold brew is where you literally take the coffee and you brew it with room temperature water over the course of a couple of days. So what happens is over the course of a couple of days, you have a slow leaching of the flavor profile, the nutrients, the polyphenols, the caffeine, all that coming out over a slow period of time. Okay, you compare that to brewing a cup of hot coffee and you're putting scalding water onto a bean that's not only potentially damaging the bean with a lot of heat, but you're also pulling out the acidity and you're pulling out the flavors swiftly and quickly. Therefore, you're ending up with a more acidic coffee, but you're also heating up this coffee bean and pulling out toxins and pesticides that were in the bean to begin with. So yeah, hot coffee is okay, but cold brew is significantly better because you're not going to have the toxins and you're not going to have a lot of the negative effects. You're also not going to have the acidity and the bitterness. So when you're fasting or you're following a keto diet and your stomach might be a little bit sensitive, you're going to find that on an empty stomach, that cold brew is much, much easier on your tummy. Okay, now let's take a look at what's happening with the caffeine content. Okay, we want good bioavailable caffeine. Okay, and when you look at cold brew versus hot brew, you have to factor in what you're actually getting in the way of caffeine. Now, a lot of people will tell you that cold brew has more caffeine right out the gate. And it's kind of true, but it's kind of not. You see, when you actually look at brewing coffee, ounce for ounce with the water to brew ratio, hot coffee actually has more caffeine. But hear me out on this. Okay, hot coffee has more caffeine because you're pulling more caffeine out of the bean when you're heating it. It's expanding and you're able to extract more caffeine. But, and this is a huge but, the cold brew uses much less water 
when you're actually going through the brewing process. So even though ounce for ounce brew to water ratio, you're not pulling out as much caffeine, you're using two and a half to three times less the amount of water. So the concentration is significantly higher. This also means that you're pulling out higher quality caffeine and you're also pulling out the higher quality polyphenols. So you have the perfect ratio of caffeine and antioxidant effect that you could possibly want with cold brew. So if you were to go to Starbucks and you were to order a hot coffee, you might have 100 milligrams of caffeine. If you were to order a cold brew, they would give you a cup of cold brew and they would add water to it and you'd end up with about the same amount of caffeine as you would with the hot coffee. So the trick is to ask them not to add water. Then you have more caffeine. You see, it's just the concentration. When you go to Starbucks, you go to any other coffee shop and they add water to it, it's not because they're just making a pre-made concentrate. It's called the concentrate because that's what they actually brewed in the first place. And it's really strong for most people. But when you're looking at trying to reduce your acid content, you're trying to get something that's gonna give you a quick boost in the morning, especially if you're training fasted or working out fasted, you want that small amount of just concentrated cold brew. That's what I do. So just get a tall cold brew with no water added to it, and perfect. You've got concentrated caffeine, concentrated polyphenols, and you're in the black. You're ready to rock and roll and get a good workout in. So I hope that this clears up a little bit of the confusion between nitro coffee, hot coffee, cold brew, and why nitro coffee is not the enemy and why you're not putting a chemical in your body. You're putting an elemental gas that's totally chemically dead and not gonna damage you. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos or you wanna know about little tricks that you can use coffee with, put them down in the comment section below. I'll see you soon.